Hello, I'm Pastor Matt, joining me again for another weekly Bible study. We are in the third week of our current series uh, entitled, Jesus Said to Do What? Uh, and in this series, we're looking at uh, different things that Jesus has commanded. So he calls us to, to follow. Uh, he calls us to obedience. These are God's ways versus our ways. And in fact, one of my favorite nicknames uh, or names, I shouldn't say nicknames, but one of my favorite names for Jesus and all of scripture is the way, the way. And so as we try to seek to live the way, we're digging through the Bible and looking at some of Jesus's specific commands to us um, that he calls us to follow. Now, the first week of uh, this series, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Jesus' call to obey his commands. And so we know that Jesus is serious about what he teaches. He calls us to continue to follow those. In fact, he says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so we emphasize the importance of learning from Jesus's teachings, but then applying those things into our life. We're not just called to believe in him. Uh, we're called to obey and to follow him. Last week, we talked about repentance. You know, the first thing, the first message that Jesus gave was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, repent, which means to change, change around, turn your ways, change your mind about who God is. And so those two are the kind of the heart and the foundation of this whole series. Number one, that we are called to follow and obey Jesus and his teachings. And number two, he calls us to a drastic and dramatic change in our lives. And all of these teachings are going to lead to that. They're going to lead to changes in our lives that we have a choice to follow Jesus or to turn away. And so as we dig into scripture uh, today, we're going to look at another one of Jesus's commands and focus on how we might follow him and live in his way, the way God intended us to live, uh, the way that uh, our life is just truly blessed because we're following him. Before we jump into it, uh, let's go to uh, the Father with a word of prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for your word. We just thank you, Lord, that you continue to teach us. You speak to us through your word. You speak to us through your spirit, Lord. You teach us new. And I pray that as we read your word, as we seek to learn from you, Lord, you would help us to be obedient. Help us to follow these things in our lives each and every day, Father. Mold us and make us. Help us to be more and more and more like you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to look at um, another command. I'm going to start in actually Matthew chapter 4. And if that sounds familiar to you, that's because that's where we were last week. So in Matthew 4, 17, that's where Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now if you have a red letter Bible, which just means uh, all of Jesus' words, literally what he spoke, are in red letters instead of black, You'll notice that the next sentence that has red letters is a few verses down in verse 19. And Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, if you're looking in the Gospel of Matthew, this is actually the second command of Jesus. The first was to repent and change your ways and change your mind about God and change your, your thoughts about Jesus. Um, number two is to follow him, to follow him. And what is the purpose behind that? So once again, Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now that may be a term that, um, you know, some of us aren't familiar with, uh, to fish for men. What does that really mean? Um, and I would say, you know, to kind of summarize that, I think a good scripture to look at is actually Matthew 28, 18 to 20. So this is like all the way at the end of the book, which actually I think is very meaningful. Uh, because if, if you look at, once again, Jesus's life, where he starts out, right? Calling people to repentance and calling people to follow him for the purpose that they would go and fish for other men. And then he ends the gospel, his kind of last teaching, the Great Commission after he's resurrected and before he ascends into heaven, is this. In Matthew 28, verse 18 uh, to 20, Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, I think that is a great, great description of what it means to be fishers of men, to go, right? To go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all I have commanded you. So once again, all of Jesus's teachings, which is what the focus of this whole series is. Jesus said, what are we supposed to do? What did he tell us to do? And in this case, he says, pass on the things I have taught you to others. Pass on the things I have taught you to others. So let's flip back there to Matthew 419. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And actually, you'll find a very similar verse in Mark chapter 1 and verse 17. Essentially, it's the same call that Jesus gives. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, in this case, I want to dig a little bit into the context of this scripture. Um, Jesus is out by the fishermen, right? Surprise, surprise. Uh, we've got uh, Peter and Andrew, uh, James and John. They're all fishermen. So these first four disciples that are called, uh, they're out there at the docks and they're fishing boats. Uh, they're catching, catching fish. It's what they did uh, as a profession, how they made money. So, of course, Jesus is going to use this fishing analogy uh, to kind of inform them what he's calling them to do. Uh, but what does it mean to fish for men? And this is really is is nothing that is mind-blowing or in super in-depth uh, or anything like that. Uh, but Jesus is essentially, you know, saying, rather than your life being about going out after fish, I want you to go out after people. I want you to go out after people. Seek other people. Love other people. Teach other people and bring them in. Now, when you think about a fisherman, they back then were, would have predominantly been using nets. They would have had uh, tools that they would have used in a process. They would have thrown their, note, uh, their nets over the side of the boat, and they would have pulled them in a certain way as to gather up the fish and pulled them into the boat in a specific uh, manner. And in the same way, we're called to kind of reach out and intentionally, you know, do things. You know, for them, they would have had their boats in specific spots, depending on the time of the day and the season of the year, uh, to where they were seeking people out. And all of those things are good analogies for how we are called to go and look for people. But in the midst of that, I kind of want to emphasize, once again, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, this is what they did for a living. It's what their lives were all about. It was uh, identified, you know, who they were. And so... To shift from, you know, this is what your job is, uh, and this is what your life is about, these fish and catching fish and making a living. Your life is now about doing the same thing for people, intentionally, you know, seeking them out and going places where you might find them. And um, in fact, this is, this is a huge drastic life change, because now rather than everything being about their living and their support for their own lives, things become about others. And so what I would say is Jesus stresses this, like literally change your perspective in life. It's not about your job and, and your well-being anymore. It's about others and the changes we're going to make in this world. And so even in going to work and doing your job, the focus isn't on doing the job, you know, if that's fishing, but it's actually reaching out to the people in the midst of what you're doing. And so you know, to put that in a modern perspective, I think Jesus would probably, um, you know, say things to the the uh, effect of, you know, it's not, it's just not enough to just go to church or to to just come in and listen and learn or sit in a Bible study, right? The call, the command, the purpose is to go and find people and teach them and show them all of my ways. That is the emphasis in all this. And it can get really easy, and it has been really easy, especially, you know, with uh, the coronavirus pandemic and everything that's been going on. It becomes really easy to sit at home, to stay away from people, to not intentionally seek others out, to not look for people in different seasons of life and, 
and in different areas of our life, like work and, and school and uh, out in public and our social lives, it gets really easy to get secluded and focus on ourselves and our well-being, similar to the disciples as they were just fishing and making a living. But Jesus calls us to change our perspective and seek after people, to seek after other people, and that is the focus. And so it's not enough to just sit around and, and to learn and even to throw up, like it's nice to throw up Bible verses and inspirational quotes on Facebook, but if we're not connecting and drawing people in, and I love that view of thinking, you know, with the fishing nets and, and pulling people to us in love, uh, um, that's just such a different perspective um, than the way that we live sometimes. And, you know, I look at uh, Mark chapter 3 and uh, verse 13, and this is kind of another one of these discipleship passages. And so this is talking about Jesus in verse 13. It says, and, and he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him and he appointed 12, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. And so Jesus as he's gathering these, we see by his own example what his purpose was. He called, he chose these people to himself, these 12 apostles, these 12 disciples. They were to be with him, around him, learning from him, seeing him, working together with him so that, so that as they grew, as they became more like him, Right As they began living uh, the way of God, he would send them out to preach, to do good works, right, to show God's love to the rest uh, of the world. And this is exactly what we're called to do with people, to connect with people. And, you know, who, you know, I could ask, like, who are you calling to yourself? Who are you praying about? Who are you meeting with? Who are you, who are you talking with about spiritual things? Who are you praying with? Who are you reaching out to? Who are you trying to fish out of this lost world and into um, the church, the body of Christ? Not the building, the group of people uh, who are followers of Jesus. And now, you know, when I think about you know, what it means to, to, call, uh, to call a disciple, uh, what it means to be a disciple. There are, there are some words in the Gospel of John and uh, in John 14 that always just, man, they stick in my mind. Just these really powerful words from Jesus. Listen to this. Jesus says this in John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now think about that. Jesus said, you will do greater works than me, because I'm going to the Father. Now, part of what he was talking about was sending the Holy Spirit. But to think that Jesus would say that people, his followers, believers in him, are going to do greater works than he could do, or than he did, not that he could do, but that he did, that's just like a mind-blowing statement. That's a mind-blowing statement. And when we think about our own lives and maybe even our church lives and what our week-to-week -week experience is, going to church or going to a Bible study or our prayer life or devotional life or whatever it is, you know, when we look at the big picture, do we go, man, am I doing these great works that Jesus talked about? Because, you know, Jesus said it, not me. Jesus said it. Um, are these great things happening in my life? Am I seeing these great changes and blessings and miracles? Am I seeing that happen? And if not, what is it that Jesus is calling me to do? And I would probably say the biggest thing that he calls us to do is just that fish for other people. Find another man, another woman, somebody who is you know that you can connect with and call Call to Christ and you can teach and show them things and, and love them and be um, a disciple or a mentor uh, to them. I mean, I think that is just phenomenal. And, and to see big time life change in people as we care for them and give to them and support and help them and show them 
the ways of Jesus. That's what he is calling us to. That's what these great works are. It's like being a proud parent, you know, when your child goes to college or gets a job or starts a family and you can see their success. That's the kind of life change and big things that we're supposed to see in Jesus. But rather than in like the material world, we're supposed to see those things in the spiritual world. As we see people spiritually grow, right? They get baptized and have a strong prayer life and they're sharing the gospel with other people around them. And they're, and they're living a life of righteousness in the midst of temptation and worldliness, maybe at their job or their school. I mean, it's in those spiritual successes that our discipling really makes a huge difference. That when we fish for those people and seek them out, um, that true change really, 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 really happens. And so if we're, if we're not excited about our faith and we're not seeing changes, probably the biggest command that we're being disobedient to is seeking other people, fishing for men. And so I encourage you, if, if, if you're a guy, you know, think about other guys that you work with or you're friends with or that are even in your own family uh, that you can teach, that you can reach out to. As a, and a, as a woman, find another woman who you can do the same thing with um, to, to teach and grow with and be fishing for people at your job and everywhere else. I mean, we all know people who um, either are aren't believers in Christ and, and need to know him or, or maybe are believers but aren't living in his ways and we're called to reach out. I mean, that's the focus and, and the purpose of everything. So much so, once again, if we cycle back to that great commission, you know, Jesus starts by saying all authority in heaven and all authority has been given to me, right, on heaven and on earth. So Jesus says, I am the one making the rules. I am the one who is in charge. I am the one reigning over all of this. Therefore, you should go and make disciples. Like that's his command. I'm the one in charge, so go and tell and teach um, and baptize others. And if we're not doing that, we're missing the huge, big purpose of being the church, of being his followers. Like the one big thing that he wanted us to do as his followers was to teach other people how to follow. So if we're not seeking them out and doing those things, uh, then our spiritual lives get a little bit stale or a lot of bit stale and powerless. Um, and we don't see major change. And so I want to encourage you, I want you to encourage you this week um, to seek people out. Uh, as Jesus would say, go and bear fruit. And that is going to be the last verse that I want to talk to you about today. And it's in John 15 uh, chapter 8. So kind of in the same section of the Bible, same section of Jesus's uh, teaching with his disciples. And he says, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. And what does it mean to bear fruit? Well, it means that your life and the things that happen in your lives really reflect who Jesus is. And the biggest reflection of Jesus is Jesus going, teaching, serving, right? Healing, caring for, all of those things are the things of Jesus. And that's exactly what we do when we're called to make disciples and we're called to go fish for men. So in following Jesus, our lives should be bearing fruit. And ultimately that fruit displays itself both in our actions, but also in the beliefs and actions and growth in other people. And if it's not happening with other people, once again, we're missing out on that great commission. We're missing out on that call to go and be fishers of men. So as we kind of close today, I, I just want to really just simplify and rein everything in here. So Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, right? Go therefore and make disciples. And with those calls, how can we apply those in our lives very specifically? Here's where I would tell you to start. Just take some time um, to think about, focus on, meditate on your life and your spheres of influence. So that would be like your family. Who are the people that you connect with within your family? That could be your immediate family. Uh, that could be brothers and sisters, cousins, aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, whatever it is. Connections that you have in your family and people that you feel drawn to or, or called to help uh, to teach or to show uh, the way of Christ to. Think about your job. 
the people that you're around. Maybe you have people who are really rotten all the time. You have people that you know uh, are lost or are not believers. Or maybe you have people that you are, are friends with, but you've never gotten spiritual with them. Uh, think of other, other spheres of influence that you have, like school or sports teams or, or clubs or groups that you might be a part of or, or places that you go to or you know people. And all of those places, here's where I would tell you to start. Think about the people in those places first. And then secondly, begin to pray. So if you put it on a note card, you have a prayer journal or something, uh, put it on your phone to remind yourself that when you pray and, and try, uh, try to pray every single day, that you would include people in those locations, a specific person in your family or work or any of those other places, or even call, hey, I go to this place a lot. I go to the gym a lot. I go to the mall a lot. I go to whatever a lot, you know. Show me somebody new that I can just say hi to and get to know and try to draw into the family of faith. Be praying. So step, step one, think about those people and those places that you go to where you have an, an influence and can make connections. And number two, begin to pray each and every day for a specific person or in general the place that you might find a person to connect with. And then number three is just to get Spiritual, make a connection, right? Say hello, say hello. Um, get to know somebody or invite somebody to be spiritual. That might be just to pray with you once a week. That might be to start by coming to a Bible study to start to get to know each other a little bit. That might be inviting them to your church. But this is about you. This isn't about like pawning a person off on the church and just getting them here. Uh, but it's about you maintaining a connection. So praying for them, praying with them, teaching um, continually encouraging and praying for them. Just even as you start to get together, don't stop praying, uh, but continue to push that forward. And then Jesus's ultimate goal when he's fishing for men and making disciples is that that person can now begin to do the same, right? That the person that you have mentored or discipled now has the capability and the strength and the courage and the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to go and reach out to others. And you want to be a part of that as well. You want to continue to pray for them and encourage them to do the same. But we also have to be doing that in our own lives as well. So that never stops. We're always thinking about our areas of influence and places we're at and the people involved in those areas that we can connect with. But you have to be bold enough to reach out, connect, and then make things spiritual, have spiritual conversations, whether it's about prayer, church, or straight to Jesus and the gospel, how he saves us, inviting somebody to your home, inviting somebody to a Bible study group, inviting somebody to church, uh, sit with them, you know, whatever it takes. This is what we're called to do. We're called to connect with each other as people and us being believers. We're called to be that connection to Jesus. Remember, he says, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So it is us as individuals that are called to not only share the gospel with the people around us, but also to teach them everything. Be with them, beside them. We sit together in church. We go to the same Bible studies. We eat together in our homes and we grow and we grow and we grow and we grow together as we both continue to reach out to more people. So reach out to somebody. If there's anything that will make your spiritual life more vibrant, that will give your life purpose, right? It is sharing Jesus with the people around you. So be praying, be looking, be encouraging. And if you need help, all of the pastors here, the staff members or the leaders, elders here at the church, we're here for you. Please reach out. We'll help you with a study. We'll help you with prayer, uh, whatever it takes. You can contact us here on Facebook. You can contact us via uh, email. You can come to the church, come in uh, to the office during our normal hours. Please reach out. We'd love to speak with you. We'd love to help you. We'd love to uh, encourage you. With that, um, let me pray for you. Father God, I am so grateful, Lord, for how you love us, how you teach us, how you uh, are with us, how you've sent your spirit upon us, Lord. I pray that you would help us. Uh, give us courage as we are looking at these places that we have influence in our family and, and at work and at school and uh, all the other places that, that we go to and people that we're around, Lord, help us to have courage to, to meet new people, to reach out, to draw people in, to share the gospel with them, Lord, to help to teach them, to walk beside them, to encourage one another, Lord, to meet together, to have meals, to be together in church and in Bible studies, Lord. Give us the courage and give us the heart to do this, Lord. 
Lord, I pray you would send your spirit and send revival that we would, uh, Lord, seek after you and build one another up uh, in everything that we do, Lord. Send us out to be your disciples, to fish for men and make more disciples who will continue to reach out, Lord. And we do all of this not for our own glory or success, but for your glory, because you are so good, so loving, so mighty. Your plan is, is amazing and wonderful and eternal, Lord. And Father, we get to be a part of that because you sent your son to die for our sins. Lord, we love you and I pray that you would just help us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for joining me again, guys. And I will see you 